And first in my list is Olivier Appert. Okay, I'm, uh, I will um, uh, like in my presentation to set up the scene of the U.S. and China. We discussed uh, yesterday and today about uh, the, trade, uh, uh, the trade battle between those two countries. And uh, I think it's uh, interesting, and it was on the agenda of this uh, meeting, I think it's interesting to consider what could be the impact of this trade war on the energy scene. And first of all, I would like to highlight the, uh, the, landscape, the, the change of the landscape both in China and in the U.S. Uh, the last 10 years. And in fact, for the last 10 years, the landscape has dramatically changed. And just consider the figures, some figures, in 2007 and 2017. Energy demand in the U.S. is characterized by a great stability, uh, but there is a game changer of uh, the uh, uh, shale revolution, but I will come back afterwards. Total <coughs> energy consumption as well as oil consumption decreased by around 4%, and uh, refinery capacity is almost uh, stable. Uh, on the contrary, total energy consumption in, uh, of China increased during this same period by 45%, oil consumption by 54%, and refining capacity by 66% uh, just in 10 years. Uh, internal production of uh, oil remains stable in China, increased in, uh, uh, for gas, but in fact, consumption of gas has been multiplied by a factor of four in just 10 years. So China is now the second importer of LNG behind Japan. Coal production and consumption grew by 20%. We, uh, it's, uh, uh, in the Western country, we consider that uh, coal is over, but it's not the case in China and the consumption increased, but coal demand peaked in uh, 2013, despite a recent slight increase. China has, moved, uh, has started to move away from coal, uh, and in those last 10 years, the share of uh, coal in China's primary energy mix declined to 60.4%, from 74% just 10 years ago. Electricity consumption almost doubled, and it is clear that uh, energy security is the Achilles heel of China. China's oil import dependency rose, ratio rose to 68% in 2017, uh, the highest in its history, and natural gas imports dependency rose to almost 40%. A few words on renewable energy, which has been increasing both in China and in, in, in the US. But when the renewable energy increased by a factor of four in the US, it increased in the same period by a factor of 30 in China and 40% of global investment in renewable energy are done in China, and you know that uh, four Chinese uh, companies are amongst the five biggest producers of solar panel, which was not the case at all 10 years ago. <coughs> the geopolitics of oil and gas experience during this period, the game changer of non-conventional uh, hydrocarbons in the US, and thanks to shale revolution, Oil, U.S. oil production increased by a factor of two, despite the drop of oil prices, and the U.S. are now the first pro producer of petroleum ahead of Russia and Saudi Arabia. Gas production increased by a factor of 40, and the U.S. became a net uh, exporter of gas. And thanks to the Shell oil and gas revolution, energy, U.S. energy dependence has fallen from 29 percent 
in 2007 to only 8% in 2017. This is opening, uh, opening wide opportunities for the US diplomacy, as it is in cl explained clearly in Trump's America First Energy Plan. The clear objective is to make America energy independent, and the energy independence of Obama has been replaced by an energy dominance. And I quote one of Trump's tweet, American energy dominance is a strategic economic and foreign policy goal for the United States. The US wants to become and stay totally independent of any need to import energy from the OPEC cartel or any nation hostile to our interest. So it is not surprising that energy is also at the core of the Trump war between uh, China and the, uh, uh, the Trump-led war with China. I just remind you that uh, it started in March and June uh, 2018 when the US imposed the tariffs or quotas on steel and aluminum. And uh, then in July and August, the US began imposing tariffs on 50 billion uh, of Chinese industrial goods on the ground of unfair trade practices as China has re, re, uh, re, retaliated with uh, tit for that, that measures, President Trump has imposed tariffs on 200 billion in Chinese goods and has threatened uh, to tariffs all Chinese imported goods. During this escalation, energy product has been included by China, such as LNG or coal. As China's domestic energy consumption has grown, the, con the country has become a significant destination of U.S. E energy export. China has taken a large share of incremental volume of U.S. LTO and emerged as the second largest buyer of U.S. crude in 2017. But despite this dramatic increase, the U.S. accounts for less than 3% of Chinese crude imports. As the global market is fungible, China would likely replace the lost U.S. barrels for its top sellers, Russia or Saudi Arabia. And clearly, China will also continue to import Iranian crude despite the U.S. embargo. So, in the short term, the biggest winners of an oil trade war between the U.S. and China would be OPEC and Russia, which is quite surprising. China has retaliated uh, to the U.S. tariffs by imposing, amongst others, a 10% tariff on U.S. LNG. The U.S. is becoming the third largest LNG exporting country by capacity, but currently the U.S. is not a major supplier of LNG to China. The U.S. represents less than 4% of total Chinese LNG imports in 2017, and the trade conflict could, however, have a significant impact on the new wave of U.S. LNG uh, project. The Chinese tra tariffs may delay or even stall some U.S. LNG projects and slow down the expansion of U.S. LNG exports. China will not lack alternative resources. A cut in U.S. LNG imports by China will open the door further to cooperation with Russia. Other energy exporters will benefit, such as Qatar, Papua New Guinea, or Australia and Canada, and the recent FID taken by LNG Canada clearly targets Asian and China's market. Since August 23, China has imposed an additional 25% import tariff on U.S. coal. In 2017, China imported, in fact, 3 million tons of U.S. coal, representing only 1% of total Chinese import and almost nothing in its total consumption. So the impact of the tariffs will be minor. On the U.S. side, China accounted for only 5% of U.S. coal export. But uh, the effect of China's tariffs 
on the U.S. coal industry can be seen, in fact, as a missed opportunity for U.S. miners as the Chinese market was a potential outlet for U.S. coal. Trump decided also to impose on, on top of a quota of 2.5 gigawatts of import free uh, of duty, a 30% tariff on solar panels. The objective was to stimulate the creation of new jobs in the U.S. Some new factories will be built, creating some jobs. However, the impact of, uh, on the downstream industry will be significant. That's why the Solar Energy Industry Association uh, were opposed to tariffs. Developers have since reported the cancellation of freeze of more than 2.5 billion in large projects. Let's add to additional impact for the, oil, uh, for the uh, energy industry in the U.S., the imposition of uh, tariffs on imported steel will have an indirect impact on the U.S. oil and gas industry and prices of U.S. steel products have soared. So these have a significant impact in, uh, the, for the oil, and, uh, the oil and gas industry and also that's why the oil and gas executive expressed their opposition to the tariffs. But though we can't ignore the fact that the trade war may have an indirect impact on energy mar market and that there is a risk that the current trade tension escalate further would have an adverse effect on confidence, asset prices and investment and impact, in fact, the economic growth. Lower economic growth would in turn reduce the pace of increase of crude oil and energy demand and the, this is the last potential impact of this uh, uh, trade war between China and the U.S. Thank you, Olivier. Just one small question to you. You said that uh, China will continue buy oil from Iran. Do you think China will increase the volume of importation or decrease with this trade uh, war between U.S. and China may have certain impact? Will China try to do a deal to reduce the oil importation or just battle by increasing the importation of oil from Iran. Which do you think China will take? I'm convinced that uh, China does not care about the embargo and uh, in fact due to the war, the trade war between China and the US, they will continue to import and even increase their imports. Uh, what could be the retaliation measures the retaliation measures, as explained by uh, Trichet uh, just uh, before, are detrimental for Western companies. And that's why Total, for example, decided to, uh, to drop from uh, uh, SPAS LNG 11. But what could be the retaliation measures of the DOG or the, the uh, U.S. government towards uh, the Chinese company, and by the way, I'm convinced that the Chinese, the Communist Party in Beijing will urge companies to oppose any, uh, any uh, decision of the U.S. Is there any Chinese participants in, in here to comment? Maybe not. Okay, well, maybe we may back to this Iranian issue uh, maybe later, but...